Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to talk to you about how to enrich data using KSQL. Now, because KSQL is so much like SQL, I'm not going to give you a ground up uh, account of all of the bits and pieces of its syntax, because mostly you know them. Um, you need to see some examples of how to do streaming specific things, but you kind of get the idea of a select and a join, and you know, you know what these things are probably. Following that tradition, uh, KSQL provides a decent library of popular scalar functions that all have similar meanings to their likely counterparts in ANSI SQL. You could find the absolute value test for array membership, you can coerce typing with cast, uh, do basic numerical things like find the ceiling or floor of a floating point number, concatenate strings, convert to lowercase, find the length, all those goodies like that. Uh, you've also got rounding and bigger things like converting a string to a timestamp, um, and other string operations. Now, as always, for more on that, see the documentation at docs.confluent.io for a complete list. Uh, we'd never attempt to give you a complete list of all that here and all the details in a video. You always want to see the docs online for that. If those scalar functions aren't good enough for you, you can also write your own UDF. People have done some pretty cool things here. Some people are starting to play with uh, like machine learning oriented UDFs in KSQL, which is pretty crazy if you think about it, but it's happening. Just to give you one example though of a built-in scalar function, here's cast. Now imagine that page views has JSON data in it and page ID is a string, because that's really, that's all it can be, right? Page ID is a string, that's fine, but I want it to behave as a big int so I can select page ID and cast it to a big int. And now in that new stream I'm creating, it's going to be a big int. Of course, this as shown is a non-persistent query. I could also say create stream new page views as, and then this select and that program would be off and running. And that new stream that I create as a result would have likely a string and a big int field called user ID and page ID respectively. Filtering data is another very common data enrichment task. Uh, I can create a new stream or new table filtering from a previous one just with a where clause. And it works just like you'd think. Uh, there's even support for like. So as you see here, I'm creating a new stream called users like Bob. Hey, those are great users. As a select of just user ID from users where user ID is like Bob star, anything beginning with Bob. Uh, so filtering is absolutely an option and equality and inequality operators are also supported. Let's talk for a moment about joins. Now here is where I can enrich data from one source with data from another source. So in KSQL 4.1, what we can do is we can join streams and tables. You can specifically left join a table to a stream. And this is the most common by far operation that you're gonna perform is you're gonna have a stream of data and you're gonna to have to look some stuff up from a table to enrich that stream. Going the other way, joining a stream to a table or a stream to a stream or a table to a table, these are things that will be supported in a future version of KSQL. So right now, joining a table to a stream is the thing that we do and let's have a look at that. So here, this is creating a new persistent query called page views female create stream page views female as, and then there's a select. So let's walk through the select a line at a time. We are selecting a uh, user ID from the users table, then region ID and gender from page views, which presumably is a stream left joined to users. And that makes a lot of sense. Users is very likely going to be a table and left join makes sense because we still probably want the page views uh, in the new stream, even unenriched, if that's the best we can do, but we're going to join. So from page views, left join users on page views, user ID equals users, user ID. Uh, that's a very unsurprising join condition. We're basically just saying, well, we've got a user ID in our page view stream. Let's pick up the record from the user table and do the join. And finally, we'll do some filtering with that where clause. Now that gender is available as a field, because we joined the users table, and that comes from that table, presumably, we can filter where gender equals female. So now we're only going to see female page views in the new stream. Uh, that is the upshot of this whole query. But it doesn't take much to express that. And it's really very, very readable. Even if you don't yet understand deeply the distinction between stream and table, we've got another video that covers that, or the create stream, doesn't make sense as a thing distinct from just saying select. We've got another video that covers that. That's the topic of persistent queries. 
Um, even if you don't know those things, you really can read this. You can see what this is doing. And it's not so many steps from being able to read it before you can begin to produce your own KSQL queries, just like this one. Okay, another enrichment step is rekeying. I have some old stream here, and it's partitioned in a particular way based on the needs of the original consumer of that stream, right? Somebody decided on a partitioning scheme for that, and it made sense, and it's still being used by that consumer, but we need it to be partitioned by a new thing. There's a field in that value, in the, the, the JSON or Avro value inside the messages of that stream, uh, there's a field that we want to partition by. So effectively, we're repartitioning the stream. Now, this isn't Kafka rocket science to do this with a producer and a consumer, but it's a lot harder than this, right? Here, we're just selecting from the old stream and saying, well, partition by this field, create a new stream called that. And now this is a persistent query that's always running. Anytime records arrive at old stream, they will be produced into new stream partitioned by that new field. So that new stream will effectively have that new key. Super handy. So those are the basics of enriching data with KSQL. Of course, there's always more to say, but we want to keep this short and get you off and running just as quick as you can.